we have uh, Calixto Bieto with us, the director of the show. Hi. Uh, Bettina Auer next to me is the dramaturg. The dramaturg, I don't know if that is an English word for it, really? No. no? no. It's something that they have. <laughs> it's uh, a German in invention, so it's a German <laughs> word, dramaturg. And Rebecca Rings, who is they the set it. designer <laughs> of the show. <laughs> and Randy Stene, who is a member of the ensemble of the opera in Copenhagen, but she uh, has joined us for this production as Giulietta. And she will also sing a little bit for us uh, before you leave. I thought that we, we should start to, to tell a little bit about the story. What it's, it's, very, it's not so easy, uh, really, this uh, plot. It can be quite confusing. I've seen the opera several times, and it was actually first when I saw Calixto's production that I understood what it's, what it's about. <laughs> uh, it's quite difficult to understand. It is quite difficult. Sh maybe we should just <coughs> play the first film. <coughs> It's uh, the first scene where Hoffman is um, meeting his, his friends and, and they are drinking. Can you, can you tell us maybe, Bettina, f first, what, what, what this first scene is about? Mm -hmm. The friends are meeting, or a group of men, I would say, a group of men of a little bit drunken, crazy men, meet on stage. They come on a, a plain stage and um, they want to have fun a male fun, it's a special kind of fun. And they are waiting for the leader, their star, that's Hoffmann. That's the poet, E.T.R. Hoffmann. Um, and they want him to, to tell a story, to sing a song. And there's this famous song of Klein Zack, of the dwarf of Klein Zack. And they have fun and they fight and they're a bit aggressive. And then there's a special moment when this man with a big belly tells about uh, the loves, um, the girls, they love. So there's another side of this man. And this gives the inspiration to Hoffmann to tell about his love. And during his song um, about the dwarf, Klein Zack, he, he switches to another vision, to the vision of Stella. That's uh, the girl he loves. The, the others are irritated because he tells, oh, it's, uh, uh, the vision, it's so beautiful, and they say, hey, it's a dwarf, it's not beautiful. So, and he comes back and they say, no, sing the song for us. But he starts to uh, do a journey of fantasy and uh, wants to tell three stories. One, uh, the first is about a puppet, Olympia. The second is about an artist or a singer, Antonia. And the third is about a courtesan, Giulietta. That's fun. <laughs> So that's the beginning, and then he goes into his fantasies and tells these stories. The beginning was, uh, it was, uh, like uh, Bettina said, it's a meeting of, uh, of alcoholics. And, and they are meeting in a, in a no landscape, in a, I don't know, I was thinking, uh, in a uh, empty, empty road or empty stage, whenever they are meeting there, and uh, the real uh, show start when this alcoholic poet of the, in the street, a poet of the street, start to dream about uh, fantasies about women. Uh, it's dreaming. It's inventing. It's completely, I mean, like the logic of the dreams is, is it's quite difficult to follow. I mean, uh, we try to do very minimal because as Per said, this opera, even when I, um, even for me, I'm confusing, I still am confusing the names of the libretto because the libretto was never ending. 
it was never f uh, finished. And the original libretto, I mean, the original story. And it's extremely uh, confusing. And it, uh, because after that, a lot of people was writing music for this libretto, writing new uh, scenes, new uh, areas, new duettos, new changing the order. It's completely confusing. And we try to do, in, in a way, uh, very minimal, minimal. The story, finally, is very minimal. Is the imagination of alcoholic poet and with a woman, and at the end he's coming to reality, and he has to face what is reality, and he takes a decision in in his life, the what he wants to do. But this is uh, you will see on the on the show. The romantic myth about an artist who is drinking and uh, being creative is some often also uh, the way this opera is interpreted. Yeah. But I, I think you, well, I don't think, I know you have a quite opposite point of view. Can you explain yeah. that? Is, is yeah. that? is it? Uh, no, no, no. This is Hoffman a... Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, Hoffman is a... Uh, he, fail, he fails. He's failing completely because uh, uh, he's an alcoholic, he's ill. I mean, and this is, this is like you said, it's a romantic myth. It's, uh, alcoholism is, is, is an illness. It's, I mean, it's not, nothing, uh, nothing romantic. And like uh, I have uh, several members of my family that were completely alcoholics and I can uh, probably, maybe you know as well, because everybody knows this, and this is not romantic or funny at all, I have to say. And in a way, this is, a, as well, I was thinking, uh, uh, it's a kind of homage to, to, to this part of my family, in a way. But it's completely, because uh, 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 Hoffman, the real Hoffman was, uh, uh, the writer, I mean, <coughs> he was drinking quite a lot, and, uh, but uh, he tries to combine, uh, finally, he was living in a duality between the, the bu petit bourgeois fonctionnaire and his writing. He was uh, employed by the city of Berlin yeah, yeah, yeah. as a lawyer. Huh? Uh, as a lawyer. At a very high position. Yeah, so but he was. Uh, but he was a, a bourgeois in a way. Yeah, yeah, representative of the establishment on one side, and on the other side, he was. But uh, he was he was drinker. trying to be an artist. Yeah. He wanted to be an artist, of, uh, but he didn't succeed, and he has to accept a job in Berlin. Yeah. And he starts with this duality, um, but he, f I think he finally he, he found the balance. This is the story of. Uh, we are telling the story of somebody who didn't find the, the balance at all. Yeah. And he's completely uh, in the, in the, it's going into, into the darkness. But this is, it is, some parts of the music is not like this, but uh, a lot of parts of the music, it's, it's full of reminiscence to this, uh, to this uh, aggression, to this uh, darkness. It is full. So the opera has five scenes, five acts. <coughs> what we just saw is the introduction where the boys are meeting and Hoffman is telling uh, this uh, story about his, his love. And then the next three scenes are the meeting with three different girls, as, as you said. The first one is then Olympia. Shall we just have a look at the second film? <laughs> it's uh, puppets, dolls, and models. And uh, Rebecca has designed a, a room, uh, which is also surreal. Rebecca, can you, can you tell a little bit about uh, your challenge for these three different girls and three different uh, Yeah. Um, maybe I, I should say, normally when we work on the set idea, we like to find one strong idea which then during 
the night develops and changes and deforms or yeah, Verwandlung, I don't know, um, Trans transforms into something else. And uh, this time when we were talking about uh, the story, I remember the first thing Calixto uh, said to me when I asked him, what do you think is this about? He also, he, he also said, it's about the freedom of fantasy, which is like, the, for me, it's the positive uh, part of this whole opera. The negative one is the destruction and the destructive part of uh, Hoffmann. Um, so this idea of, okay, fantasy is the kind of freedom that made it very important for me to find a solution, to, to find a different way now and to, to explain these worlds he imagined, they really appear like dreams. It's not a reality which is there and where the uh, whole setting and the whole acting takes place, but it's really something that suddenly appears and suddenly disappears again. And um, it was the decision then we took, we want to have three completely different dreams and they have nothing to do with each other and they, are, um, they really appear in a fantastic way. So then, then we also decided to use the machinery of the theater um, as much as we can. I mean the basic machinery which is um, completely new and brilliant and amazing and huge. So um, the first and the fifth act take place in this wasted, um, how would you say, empty stage. So you don't see anything more than the stage. You see some light elements, but this is part of the machi machinery we show, the simple machinery. And then the machinery of stage begins to work and these different dreams appear. And um, yeah, we tried to find a variation then. So the first dream appears from above, the second flies in from behind and the third one comes up from the bottom. And so it's all like they, they really should um, shift very smoothly. Four operas for the same price. <laughs> 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 and this is a good. That's <laughs> good yeah. yeah. This is the best publicity we yeah. can because <laughs> they asked me for a sentence of publicity and, a, and a a I didn't find a sentence. And, and now I think I thought this is the sentence. But Four so operas for the same <laughs> price. <laughs> it's, it's right, yeah. They are completely different operas. I promise. And they, they are quite independent somehow. These it's completely three different. meetings with the three she girls. She created. Sort of yeah, but also the costumes and the whole world is very different and Hoffman kind of is the only person who always wears the <laughs> same and he jumps into these completely different sets. But and he dreams. is followed by two characters throughout the opera from the beginning until the end uh, who I think is quite interesting from a dramaturg point of view. Uh, it is the muse, the Nicholas, and it is the devil or the Mephisto kind of person. His nemesis uh, Lindorf Dr. Miracle and, and so on. He had four different <laughs> roles to play. <laughs> Can you say something about that, uh, Calixto or Bettina? How you. Sure. Uh, first, I want, I want to say um, in the tradition of the staging of the piece, this piece always is the tendency to, 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 to join a lot of things together characters uh, and to, to. Yes, to join the images. and. We did the different. We just we open the the, the the opera. We did we went quite against the, the the whole tradition of this opera, what Rebecca did with the with the set. And you were talking about the characters. Yeah, these two yeah, very the muse. The, the muse they are so uh, out of the context. Uh, no, you took. Do you talk? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's the um, the muse at the beginning of the piece. And she appears and she transforms to Niklas in the piece, what she's not doing in our version. She remains a wonderful, beautiful woman all the time. And she is already part of the dream because uh, the, the very beginning of the opera is a chorus of invisible ghosts. Uh, they are singing um, alcohol, beer and wine are the friends of the mankind. And uh, she is the one at the beginning who gives a little bit, some drops of alcohol to this drunken man. And she's like, a f yeah, like in a fairy tale. And she keeps on um, uh, um, 
going with Hoffman through the piece, and the other character is this Lindorf. In the piece at the beginning, it's a man, uh, a bourgeois man, and he's not an artist, but he is a, a lawyer, something like a lawyer. And in our version, it's just one of these uh, drunken men. And he transforms also in the fantasies of Hoffmann to different characters. So that's the first in Olympia act, it's Coppelius, who sells um, glasses, different kind of glasses. And that's perhaps you know the very famous tale of E.T.A. Hoffmann, Der Sandmann, The Sandman, that's where it's from. So that's Coppelius, and in the uh, second in Antonia, it's Dr. Miracle, who seduces Antonia to sing and sing and sing. Um, although it's very dangerous for her because she will die because of singing. And in the Giulietta act, it's da partuto. It's in Capitana, um, so it's also a mean character, and he has a lot of power um, on her. So she depends on his. Yes, on his ring, on his material, on his money. Um, with the but muse, it was something, uh, something I, I really like a lot to do in the, but not just in the shows. In I even when sometimes I'm writing, it's, or even when I'm thinking, it's you don't know sometimes where is the where is the line between the 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 reality and the dream and you sometimes you are you having so strong dreams you don't know if it was true or not in the morning and always I'm working with a very specific very very concrete ideas to make them into the dream for example uh, uh, Lindorf is based in a in a picture I got in, in, in Oslo uh, quite years, many years ago. I was in a taxi and it was a man lying, lying on the street with a, a black uh, suit and white shirt. He was lying in the middle of the street, completely drunk, with an Armani wonderful uh, dress. And this man, it was completely strange his story. We stopped the taxi, we catch him, and we put it into the into the, the the cup, and we said, "Where you are living?" And we drive him to his home because he was completely, and he was completely with his eyes, and it was completely dark. I don't know. Maybe he wanted to die. I don't know. And I'm not telling you uh, this because it's the way uh, the way we are. Uh, we are developing some of, of the ideas of, of the, this show, all, all the shows in general, I have to say. And the muse, I was thinking in a kind of character, uh, a very upper class woman who is wants to do a long journey into the darkness. I was thinking a uh, huge influence for me, it's uh, Buñuel. I was thinking in a kind of uh, Catherine Deneuve in Val de Joux or in the dark sides of Liz Taylor or in a kind of uh, Tennessee Williams character. But at the end, with the muse, it means the inspiration. I really, I have, but this is another story, it will be, it's, I have, uh, quite different ideas about the, what means the, the muse of the ta talent and so on. Mm, and at the end, I think what really we wanted is, she was real or she was not real? She was a woman, really an alcoholic woman in the street, very poor. Or she and this we were discovering with the, the singer during the rehearsals and I have to say, I was, it was uh, fantastic. Yesterday, in the rehearsal, we see whoa, all the journey. And uh, finally, you don't know exactly if, who was she? She was a woman trying to, very bourgeois woman, trying to make sex in the streets in the night, like in Catherine Deneuve, Catherine Deneuve in Belle de Joux. She was a fantasy, 
she was a, 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 a woman in drugs, very poor in the streets. And this is open. And this is, I like to keep these things open for the, for, for, for your fantasies as well, and for your, yeah, for your ideas. Well, before we go on telling this story, uh, I wanted to, to ask you, Randy, uh, I, have I have followed the rehearsal uh, the last weeks, and uh, you mentioned it also now, Calixto, that you develop the characters in a dialogue with the with the singers mm. you have an idea somehow but but it's 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 not like you know exactly what what you want to do with it but you develop it with the with the characters it's quite challenging you have to offer a lot when you when you work with Calixto Randi yeah it's challen challenging but it's a gift i find yes yeah because uh, that's what we want as singers to be uh, to have the uh, um, opportunity to be uh, to to offer something, and it's not decided what what we should do. And and um, I think Calixto has this. Um, he's uh, he's a magician, I think, <laughs> because he he can uh, make us feel um, that we can offer anything. Nothing is uh, wrong. Nothing is uh, really dangerous either. That's a very strange thing, because, um, and I thought maybe when I started working here, I thought maybe, oh, it's because I'm getting, I'm experienced now, and I'm getting <laughs> at this age, I have tried different things, but I can see it works, it works on me, but it also works on the very young singers. They can do anything for you, and we will, we will give you anything you want. And uh, it's, it's, I don't know what it is, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very uh, so I wouldn't say it's challenging. It's it's just a, a great pleasure. Well, any anyhow, it releases an enormous energy on stage. Mm. I I think for me that's probably the, the most significant thing about your productions, Calixto, when when you succeed, uh, is that you release an energy in the in in the actors that you don't see on an opera stage. Maybe you see it in the normal theater, but in the opera stage, you no, but the, the, the normal, singers. Hmm? But in the normal theater, they are not singing like they are doing. Hmm. I mean, this is extremely difficult for them. But uh, this, because we, not just me, Bettina, Rebecca, the whole team, we think uh, the rehearsal process is the, the very creative process, and the singers, they are part the creative process. And when a show is good, it means it's not just full of the fantasies of the director who is saying, take the glass now, drink, put it here again, and sing, and uh, no, it's not. It's full of the, of the channels of the imagination of the fantasies of the singers. But this is fantastic for our singers because, and for us as well, because uh, it's the possibility to do everything because it's opera. I mean, you can have a, a lot of lovers, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you <laughs> kill people, you, <laughs> you, you die <laughs> a lot of times, but you, <laughs> <laughs> you come, <laughs> and this is fantastic. That's yeah. why I cannot say no to anything because it's fantastic. <laughs> it's, uh, that's why uh, opera is so fantastic. Art, mm. art is freedom. That's and, and this opera, as you mentioned, is not completed by Offenbach. He died before the show was finished. And uh, there are many ways of, of restoring it or putting it together. And, and it leaves us also with freedom, which we have used quite radically in this production. Uh, maybe we should... Uh, are you ready to sing a little yeah. bit for us?
So this is at the very end of the opera when Hoffman meets Giulietta, the courtesane. It, it's all these meetings with these three girls ends in a catastrophe. Okay. Uh, the Olympia, he, he f f uh, falls in love with a girl called Olympia and he finds out it is a doll, it's not a human being. And in our production it is uh, it is like a, like a sex machine. <laughs> is that right, Calixto? It's completely right because uh, <laughs> because uh, this it's a uh, in a way uh, the I see the the young generations a lot of and they want to be perfect sexual machines and yeah and it's it's, it's a machine sexual machine who is getting getting crazy and it's yeah it's getting crazy yeah you will see and uh, but it's very related to the 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 idea of, of for sure of hysteria of freud but very related to the society today to the consume of of how uh, because probably I don't know the pornography, all these things, the consume of the sex, or how they have it has to be like a consume. We consume, uh, we not because I'm I'm getting old, but <laughs> 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 sorry, <laughs> it's Bettina who was giving me a pill before. <laughs> 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 Special <laughs> drugs from Germany, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. There are pills for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, sorry. No, but what to say is, is this a sexual machine? It's clear. It's a sexual machine and it's making an explosion because it's, and it's a lot of ideas behind of the society today. That's all. So I want to just to say it one sentence. It's so it looks so funny, but uh, for me it's a very tragic act because this woman is perfect actually, but she doesn't feel anything, and you can see that this is the the end of the act. She has to destroy everything because she doesn't feel anything good. It's like at the end she hurts herself because she wants to feel something, and it, it, this is tragic. It's very sad actually. Um, and we go to the back of, of uh, uh, Hoffman. To we go. Going to Hoffman, Hoffman uh, wanted this big confusion between uh, we are automats, or we are human beings, what we are. <laughs> and this is, 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 I mean, it's not our idea. It's in the in the tail. It's in the the Sandman. It's it's this uh, this thing in that. And it is, yeah. Yes, it's, it's a romantic topic, these things with the machines, and there it starts, this uh, thinking about yeah, but how behind, far can but it go. But behind this is, uh, is uh, I don't know, uh, today, uh, uh, I don't know, to make the perfect uh, woman, Absolutely, yeah. to create the perfect uh, sexual machine. Mm. She is multi-orgasmatic. <laughs> 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 and you but feel... What is, you what feel is for sure <laughs> is that behind all your production, I mean... Every time when you when you put on a piece, if it is Brand or Per Gint, which we have done with the National Theatre, or uh, Hoffman, which is a story from the 19th century, you always tell a story about your own uh, contemporary society. Yes, because uh, uh, um, we are living today. I use the material. This uh, we use it. What Offenbach is giving to us, and and Hoffman is giving to us the material we are using, but I cannot uh, talk about uh, the past. I, uh, I can talk about the past, talk, I'm talking, but I cannot leave the past. 
and I'm a man from today. I'm living today, I see the people today, and I have opinion about the, the things today. And all, all the artists, Verdi was a man of his period, uh, Offenbach was a man of his period, everybody's a man. Everybody is living his period, and unfortunately, we cannot live the future, and we cannot uh, live uh, the past. It's it's impossible. I mean, and that's why I think this is is is, is normal, and it's normal because finally, it's the whole art is uh, a reinterpretation. And it's the task of theatre, I think. To no theatre, painters. Yeah. It's a reinterpretation. This is the base of the art, and because we have to talk about what is worries us, it's uh, and the 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 show the the show is full uh, for sure the images, but it, but it's full of anguish. You understand very well this. Uh, here you have this. Uh, you understand this very well here. Anguish at the same, uh, desperation is, f is full sometimes of, of, of hope, hope, love, fail, but from today, because I cannot feel in, in another emotions, in another period. But, but still, aesthetically, uh, I think it's the first production I've seen, and I've seen many of your productions, that yeah. you use historical costumes in one scene. Yes. It's a homage to the homage, not homage, but it's in our minds, it's the to the the fairy tales, because uh, all the all the traditions we have uh, a kind of Copelius. He's not Copelius there, but uh, Dr. Miracle. Is Dr. Miracle? <laughs> Uh, we, we, no, I'm, I'm laughing because with Dr. Miracle I'm thinking uh, things, but we have, it's a homage to the stories, the fairy tales, the stories we have in all the traditions and in all the families and, and the stories you are listening as well about the, the when you are a child, uh, these stories, uh, uh, they tell me stories about the El Coco, and El Coco was a man who was taking the children and putting it in a bag. When you, do, when you don't sleep, they put you in a bag and they throw it to the river. But in Hoffman as well, Coppelius is the one who is taking the eyes of the children, putting in a, he's making collections of eyes and giving to the birds, the eyes of the, to the, yes, to the birds, and the birds, they are eating the, the, the eyes. And I wanted to, I thought it would be fantastic to make uh, uh, a kind of tale, a romantic and a very, a very erotic, I think. Finally, it's, it's a very erotic uh, tale, like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you have the trolls, and uh, we, we have different, different things. And it's, that's why we did it in a period, and uh, I really love it do it in, in a period. It's, it is a wonderful contrast. And the story in the Antonia act is he falls, he falls in love with the, with the girl, Antonia, and uh, she is forbidden to sing because if she sings, she will die. She has this kind of uh, illness or she's deposed in a way that she cannot, she cannot sing. Uh, and her mother died. Was, yeah, was also, was also a, a singer, great also singer. Yeah, great singer. Mm -hmm. And she comes into the picture also. She uh, appears, yes, as a ghost. As a ghost, and she sings, sing, yes, like And me. it is this other person, the the nemesis, Doctor Miracle, in this in this scene, that encouraged her still to mm -hmm. sing, and then per it ends mm. tragic. Yeah? But perhaps um, the voice of. Um, Dr. Miracle is also the inner voice of Antonia because she wants to sing, she wants to be a singer. She doesn't want to stay at home, she, she wants to succeed and she hears a 
I think she hears, it, hears an inner voice and then Dr. Miracle appears and it's also what she sings in her uh, aria and in, in the duet, that she is um, in a fight between career, singing, career and love with Hoffman. So, and Hoffman is a bit jealous. He says, oh, you love music too much. You should l love only me. She pays with her life, so. But oh. it's the, fan the fantasy oh. as well to live in a in a, uh, a fantastic romantic story, a, t a tale. It's to live, it's like when you go to see a movie and you would like to, to live the same character of the movie. Oh, I would like to have this. And this is a little bit, an, uh, the, the no, not a little bit, is the, is the Antonia's part. That's why we stage it in the period with, with some, some uh, aesthetic tricks to make extremely cinematic. It's, it's, we use a uh, very, very strong light to make very, very, it's, it looks a movie, really. Based, uh, like, uh, it's a movie. And then in the last scene with you, Randy, Giulietta, then that's the, f the opening of, of the Giulietta act is the most famous music from Hoffman's uh, tales, the tales of Hoffman. It's the Baccarole. Uh, you have heard it many, many times. I, I, I will not sing it, but, uh, and it's in Venice. You, you usually you see pictures of uh, gondolier and they, they sing on the can channel in, in Venice. But we are far away from Venice in your production, <laughs> Calixto. It's a rough, uh, modern, uh, Trafficking society, or, or uh yeah, a kind of. It's. <coughs> I, uh, I didn't want to be extremely obvious, but it's. We wanted to, uh, with Rebecca, to to create a, a very. A very abstract, Barcarola, but it's very similar, uh, to buildings, to bridges in the night to the bridges, and now I saw uh, you have a lot of these bridges now here in, in Oslo, and you have these new buildings, and it's like a, a city in the night, and as well, uh, uh, yes, trafficking, but uh, in a way, in a um, very dreamy way, way. Sometimes you see the people in the night, and you, you make like this with your eyes, and it's all, everything is defor deformated. It's a huge deformation of the colors. And, but this is, uh, you have this tradition here, very strong uh, with uh, Munk, it's extremely strong. You have the, the faces, the, the deformation of the, the form faces. And we wanted to create this world in the night and uh, this kind of, uh, dreamy, brothel, related with the modern society and, and in, in a way as well with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the music. That's why I think this music is, is very, very uh, appropriated for this. It's extremely, it's, it's on a step further of uh, Offenbach, but I think Offenbach, we have been extremely happy with this. I think it's the, the chance and also the challenge for every team to create his own version because, as you said, the opera is not finished. I just want to say, uh, tell one example, Gustav Mahler, the composer, uh, when he did um, in 1904, um, Hoff Hoffman's Erzählung, also Hoff uh, Hoffman's Tales, he did it without the first and the uh, fifth act. He just cut it, so he did his own version. And then at, uh, at the world premiere in 1881, they cut the Giulietta act. Oh, it's too long, the opera is too long. So th they cut it. So every team and every production has its own version, I think. And uh, that's a very modern point of view to, to think about an opera as material. And here you have the challenge, you have to do that. Normally, um, you can change a little bit, or you do just in Wagner, you do the whole opera, you do 
nobody would uh, cut anything, but here it's the challenge to do it. And I think we have now, we have the shortest version because we don't have any dialogues and all, uh, not recits. There are several um, versions of it with recits, not from Op Offenbach, but um, by Giro, Ernest Giro. And they are terrible. Uh, Felix didn't want them, so and we don't use any dialogues. It's we terrible. Yes, yeah, you tell the story without um, these transforming acts or the übergänge, what heißt, uh, transitions. transitions. Yes, mm. just like a dream. Cut, cut, cut. Time is flying. Uh, maybe before we we end, Randy, can you say two words about your character? What, what, what is your uh. function in the opera? Julieta is uh, the courtesan, and um, she's, I find her, she's a little bit trapped between men, too. <laughs> uh, she is, um, she is, um, mm, the Patuto has uh, sent her to, to uh, steal Hoffman's soul or heart. <laughs> to seduce him. Yeah, I, I seduce him to get his heart and or soul, and in this version it's very... And he's I a simple man and horny, and he, and he got he he he's he very he's very. I, I manage. You manage to yes. use him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. And in this, <laughs> <laughs> in this uh, version, is it's very. Uh, you can see it. I am grabbing his heart out, and it's very. And she is. Uh, um, I I don't know. She is. Uh, she's very clear about what she wants, but also she is a woman that doesn't really. Uh, she, I can, uh, what can I say? She, she is the courtesan. She, she knows exactly what to do. But still, she is this. She is in Dapatuto's power, and she's. When I sing this song, he Dapatuto has just um, torn my eyes out. Also, he has something with the eyes. So he is, he is pushing my eyes out, and uh, it's kind of my scream. Also, I find. Uh, don't you think it's? Yes, uh, because she's a survival. Yeah. No, she's yeah, she's the strong woman, but she's still trapped. Yes, it's yeah. trapped, and mm. it's, but she tries to survive. Yeah. That's and what she tries to lie. Mm. And also Hoffman tries to kill you Yeah. with but a knife. Yes. But, but it's, a, it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. Mm. It's a nightmare mm. when you try to... To, <laughs> to kill somebody doesn't uh, function. Mm. I, don't, I don't have this dream, but I have the dream and uh, try to phone somebody all the time and yeah. I'm... I, I, uh, I'm confusing the number. Boom. Uh, no, I try again. Boom. Yeah. Boom. And it can be doing hours in my dream. Oh my God. No. Oh my <laughs> I forgot the name, <laughs> the number. Uh, uh, this is an, uh, really, uh, really a nightmare. Yeah. But she is um, a madame. Mm. And it's based the idea. It's nothing to do uh, with the costumes. Uh, but, uh, she looks fantastic in the costume she has. Uh, she, uh, but it's based in the a sentimental education of Flaubert, mm. the last part, when the men, they decided just to go to live in the brothel, to stay in the brothel. And she is the madame there mm. and surviving. And yeah, she's, she's so emotional. She on the stage. So when we have finish the three uh, scenes with the three different girls. The men meet up again in this last act. That's an epilogue. I, was it you, Rebecca, or you, Bettina, yesterday you said that this final scene of Calixto is also a quite critical point of view to, to us. Yeah. But shall we tell that now? No. It's <laughs> Maybe not. Eh? No. But no. we can just make it's them really a bit curious about it's it. A it's really a surprising ending. I can, s yeah. We don't tell it. No. No. I don't say no. So you will have to come and see it and be surprised what happens at the yeah. end of the opera. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you all, uh, Randy, Rebecca, Calixte, and Bettina. Thank you. And uh, I hope to see you then in the theater. Thank you.